This is Mission Control Houston. You're looking live at Launch Pad 0A at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport on Wallops Island, Virginia. This view of Northrop Grumman's and Terry's rocket poised on top of the pad, towering 133 feet tall, fully fueled, ready to launch over 8,000 pounds of research, fresh food, technology demonstrations, and supplies to the International Space Station. This is Northrop Grumman's CRS-17 mission, and liftoff is set for 11.40 and 3 seconds a.m. Central Time, 12.40 and 3 seconds p.m. Eastern Time, at the start of a five-minute launch window today. The first stage is already loaded with its fuel to launch into space, liquid oxygen, and RP-1 kerosene. The second stage of Antares is a solid rocket motor. LC prop two. HSS ASD is paused. The weather conditions for today's launch are looking good. It's currently 45 degrees and partly cloudy with winds at about 18 miles per hour. Teams all across the United States are supporting today's NG-17 launch. At the Wallops Flight Facility in Wallops, Virginia, which you see on your screen here, Northrop Grumman engineers are monitoring today's countdown from the Range Control Center. Copy that. Lead prop two, you can resume. HSS. They'll be counting down and walking us through the next 23 minutes HSS until launch. And they'll be in the control room from the point of liftoff to when the Cygnus resupply craft separates from the vehicle's second stage. Just moments ago, a poll was conducted of the engineering systems, and everything is currently a go for launch. Also supporting today's cargo resupply mission is the team in Dulles, Virginia. Here, another team of Northrop Grumman engineers are standing by, ready to take over the flight of Cygnus after spacecraft separation occurs. The destination for Cygnus following launch today and a two-day orbit is the International Space Station. Teams in Mission Control Houston are also monitoring the operations of the space station and watching today's launch. Roger that. We'll check 389. The flight director during this Orbit 2 shift is Judd Freeling. Stage 1, LC, countdown 1. Go ahead, LC. Yeah, provide status of cold helium bottle supply pressure. Yeah, we're still monitoring LC. Uh, we'll make a call between now and L minus 16 minutes. The crew on board the International Space Station is enjoying their weekend with a day off involved with cleaning and exercising. There are currently seven human beings living and working aboard the International Space Station as part of Expedition 66. From left to right, they are NASA astronaut Raja Chari and Tom Marshburn, European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer, Roscosmos cosmonauts Anton Shkaplerov and Pyotr Dubrov, and NASA astronauts Kayla Barron and Mark Vandehei. Vandehei is in the midst of a record-breaking spaceflight in which he will become the American with the longest single spaceflight. He's on his way to surpassing Christina Cook's 328-day mission, which he'll break on March 3rd, and on March 15th, he'll break Scott Kelly's record of 340 days in space. When Van de Heij returns to Earth on March 30, 30th, he will have spent a record-breaking 355 consecutive days in orbit. We're T minus 20 minutes and counting until today's launch. No issues being worked by the flight control team at Wallops. It is a tradition for each Cygnus vehicle to be named after a significant space explorer who contributed to human space exploration. Today's Cygnus being launched is named the SS Piers Sellers after late NASA astronaut and climate scientist Piers Sellers. Pierre Seller, Sellers began his career at NASA in 1982 and flew three times on the space shuttle aboard STS-112, STS-121, and STS-132. 
In total, Pierce Sellers spent nearly 35 days in space. And as an astronaut, he helped build the International Space Station over the course of six spacewalks totaling 41 hours. We're T minus 19 minutes and counting to today's launch. No issues being worked by the flight control team at Wallops. And it, joining us today is a special guest from Northrop Grumman to discuss today's launch. Christina Haloma is the Antares Systems Engineering Program Manager. Christina, welcome. Thank you, Sandra. I'm excited to be here, and uh, I'd just like to welcome all of you watching here in the United States and around the world to see a successful Antares launch and Cygnus mission to the International Space Station. We're getting a look at the pad now of the Antares rocket. Christina, can you tell us some of the milestones we can look toward forward to ahead of today's launch? Yes, so Sandra, there's still quite a few um, pre-launch milestones that are left here right before we launch. For example, we are currently at the tail end of the propellant loading operations. When that is complete, the team will top off the propellant and do some fuel adjustments. Um, and then we'll do a final go, no-go poll that will be completed to proceed um, to final countdown here before launch. And then at approximately three minutes before we launch, the auto sequence will be initiated. Um, that is where Antares internal flight computers take over and, uh, and commands the vehicle. So the auto, se auto sequencer then goes through the final steps of prepping the vehicle for launch and will proceed through the final countdown. Um, but after liftoff, our team will be monitoring, also monitor some post-launch milestones. Um, the first milestone will be uh, us waiting for the main engines to burn, and that'll happen for approximately 200 seconds until our main engine cutoff. And then once we get to the main engine cutoff, we'll go into a short coast right before we separate from stage one from stage two, uh, which we call the upper stack portion of Antares. After that, we'll continue to coast a little bit, um, and then about 30 seconds before starting that separation, um, and then we'll have an internal separation where the Stage 2 flies out of the external upper stack. Once, we, once Stage 2 is clear of the upper stack, uh, the Stage 2 will ignite for about two and a half minute burn that puts Cygnus real close to their orbit, and then it'll coast and ensure everything is stable, and then Cygnus will be released to the, into the desired orbit. Um, and then after Cygnus is released, they'll go through their own comm checks, and then about an hour or hour and a half after we separate, Cygnus will then release its solar arrays and be on its way to the International Space Station. So um, all in all, from launch until Cygnus gets to its orbit, it's approximately nine minutes. So it'll be, it'll be fun to watch here uh, post-launch. It sure will. And Christina, this Cygnus mission is unique in that it has reboost capability. Can you discuss the Cygnus reboost capability planned during this mission? Yes. So, Sandra, in addition to delivering more than the 8,000 pounds of critical cargo to the international, to the astronauts living on the ISS, um, the Northrop Grumman Cygnus spacecraft, spacecraft will perform its first operational ISS reboost. Um, reboosting is a critical part of altitude maintenance for the International Space Station. What happens is the Earth's atmosphere causes a slight amount of drag, causing the uh, station orbit to decay over time. So Northrop Grumman will perform the adjustment service while Cygnus is actually berthed with the station. So small, precise nudges are required to place the ISS back into its proper orbit. And uh, Northrop Grumman is very proud to offer the standard service to NASA. Thank you very much, Christina. Christina Haloma with us today by phone. And uh, GNC1, Elsie. Go ahead, Elsie. 
Yeah, step 405 provides status of tra uh, trajectory file for launch operation. Now inside 15 minutes until launch, everything continues to proceed on track for today's liftoff scheduled at 1140 and 3 seconds central time, 1240 and 3 seconds eastern time. LC, Core 1 on countdown 1. Go ahead, Core 1. So I've got step 397 for you. Fuel level adjustment is not required. Copy that. Check 397 complete. And uh, Prop 2, uh, step 398 is uh, uh, go for ARM OCCS for no adjustment to fuel level. LC, Prop 2, it's in work. And OCCS. At this hour, propellant loading is now complete. Everything continues to be green across the board at Wallops. The weather is looking good. Everything all set for Antares to begin its flight to deliver the Cygnus resupply vehicle to its preliminary orbit. Now less than 14 minutes from now. Check for step 401 is not required. Step 406, not required. Step 407, not required. And launch team will be coming up on our poll to proceed with final countdown in a little bit over a minute. And CMD, I'll wait for your call on step 408. LC the CMD. T minus 13 minutes and counting. LC the CMD. Cygnus is in launch mode and nominal. Copy that CMD. We'll check 408 complete. Okay, uh, launch team, uh, step 409. At this time, I want a poll to proceed with final countdown. GSO? GSO, go. RSO? RSO is go. TD? TD is go. Prop lead? Prop lead is go. Stage one? Stand by one, LC. MES one. MES one is go. GC. GC is go. Ace. Ace is go. Mars. Mars is go. Stage one is go. Stage one is go. CMD. CMD is go. LD. LD is go. NG. Northrop Grumman is proud to honor renowned NASA astronaut and climatologist Pierce Sellers. Throughout his career, Pierce made countless contributions to Earth and climate science, and his research revolutionized the methods for utilizing satellite data and analytics to increase our understanding of Earth's biosphere and changing climate. With unbridled optimism, dedication, and passion for the future sustainability of our ecosystem, Pierce relentlessly strived for the betterment of humankind. It is therefore an honor to return his legacy to the International Space Station that he helped to construct as the SS Pierce Sellers and Northrop Grumman are go for launch. Copy that, NG, and we are go to proceed with final countdown, check step 409. And launch team will be coming up on engine evacuation in uh, just a few seconds here. And hashtag Godspeed Little Noni. And with that poll, we are go for today's launch of an uncrewed Northrop Grumman Cygnus cargo resupply vehicle named the SS Piers Sellers to head to the International Space Station. Evacuation started. Now under 11 minutes until today's launch. Following launch today, Cygnus will spend about two days catching up to the International Space Station. Cygnus is scheduled to be captured by the robotic arm of the space station in the wee hours Monday morning. Working that, op that operation will be NASA astronaut Raja Chari and NASA astronaut Kayla Barron will be backing him up from inside the cupola. 
Rajatari will use the Canada Arm 2 to reach out and grapple the Cygnus vehicle. Minus 10 minutes. LC MES 1, step 411, vacuum verified. Copy that MES 1, we can check steps 410 and 411. At that point, Chari will turn over the robotic movements to a team of ground controllers here in Houston who will maneuver Cygnus into an installation position to be bolted into place on the Earth-facing side of the Unity module. Cygnus will remain at the space station until May, where it will depart the space station and burn up harmlessly in the Earth's atmosphere. Our capture coverage is scheduled at 3.35 a.m. Central Time, 4.45 a.m. Eastern Time on Monday. Ops 1, LC, countdown 1, step 412, you're go to enable ACS VDMs. ACS VDMs, internal power on. Copy. ACS VDMs enabled, voltage nominal, ODM commands clear. Roger that, elect one, we can check steps 412 and 413. Launch team be advised, step 414 is not required. Now under nine minutes until today's launch, everything's still looking good. and Antares has been switched to internal power. At about three minutes ahead of launch will be when the auto sequence handoff to terminal count occurs and the computers will take over for the final steps to get us to launch at the opening of today's launch window. GN2 conditioning initiated. Copy that. Check 415 complete. Inside seven and a half minutes until today's launch, you'll continue to hear some of these countdown milestones ahead of today's launch. And at the time of launch, the International Space Station will be flying 261 statute miles over northern Algeria, just south of the Mediterranean Sea. And passing T minus seven minutes. Ops 2 LC, step 417, you're good. <clears throat> you're good to initially initialize ground ordinance power supplies. Ground ordinance power supplies initialized. LC, top lead, step 416, DTSO, activation verified. Copy lead, copy Ops 2. Ground ordinance power supplies, nominal. Roger that, elect one, we'll check 416, 417, and 418. Coming up on the T-minus six minute mark. Half bay ECS transfer to GN2 is confirmed. Roger that, side control, check 419 complete. Now coming up on the T minute, T minus five minute mark.
T-minus five minutes. Ops two, step 420, initiate engine priming. Engine priming started. Ops one, transfer avionics to internal power. LC Ops one, avionics internal power on. Stand by. External power off. Copy that. Check 420, 421. Internal power nominal. Roger, LEC-1, check 422 and OPS-1, open FTS Umbi loop. FTS Umbi loop, open and green. STLU and FTS receiver indications are nominal. Roger, LEC-2, check 423, 424, OPS, send all arm command. On my mark, three, two, one, mark, all arm command sent. SA's ODMs, all arms. Copy all. NASA TD, report range status. LC, priming verified. TD is green. Range is green. Copy, range green. Copy, uh, priming has been verified. Check 427 and 428. And launch team be advised, phase three dynamic limits will be active at T minus three minutes. T minus three minutes and 30 seconds until launch. Everything's still green across the board. FC commanded to flight mode. Minus three minutes. Auto sequence start. Podium bus voltage is increased. Less than three minutes until launch. GNC one, verify ready for nav mode. LC GNC one, orb nav ready for nav. And ops two, step four thirty five, switch to nav. LC ops two, switch to nav. Orb nav telemetry verified. Copy that, GNC-1, check 436, and passing T minus two minutes, 30 seconds. Coming up on the T minus two minute mark, Antares systems in good shape. There are no issues at this time. Minus two minutes. Minus one minute, 30 seconds. 90 seconds until launch. Minus one minute. Less than one minute until today's launch. At 40 seconds, tanks will be pressurized. Minus 30 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10. Five, four, 
three, two, one. We have engine ignition. Yep. And uh, the entire launch vehicle from the launch flight facility. Engines are at 100 percent thrust. Attitude is nominal. And we have liftoff of the SS Piers Cellars carrying over 8,000 pounds of cargo to the International Space Station. Good performance on the first stage so far. Steady at 100 percent thrust and nominal. Thrust and nominal. Four valve VNO3 open. Attitude remains nominal. Electrical power is nominal. Everything continuing to look good on Antares. Passing through 25,000 feet. Attitude remains normal. The first stage is now passing through Max Q, the area of maximum dynamic pressure on the rocket. Now 90 seconds into today's flight of the Northrop Grumman Cygnus resupply cargo craft headed to the International Space Station. PNG3 now open. Engines remain steady at 100% thrust. Coming up on the two minute mark of flight, everything looking good. Attitude remains nominal, power is nominal. Seven thousand feet per second velocity. Attitude remains nominal. Attitude remains nominal. Continuing to get good reports from the Range Control Center at Wallops. Velocity now 11,000 feet per second. Power remains nominal. Beginning slow throttle down. Core pressures remain nominal. Now three minutes into today's flight, throttle down will occur three minutes into the flight, which means main engine cutoff will be coming soon. Now 55% thrust. And Miko. We have Miko or main engine cutoff, and Terry's now entering a coast stage. Fairing separation will occur about 30 seconds from now. Stage one delta V, stage one is separated. And as we lose sight of the vehicle, switching to our animation, there are some controlled firings of the inner stage of the rocket. Everything continuing to perform as expected. Yes. Stage two ignition at 2.46. And vehicle remains at nominal attitude. Of fairing separation. Fairing separation confirms Cygnus now exposed to the atmosphere as it continues its trek uphill to its preliminary orbit. Stage two ignition. Stage two ignition confirmed. Stage two remains nominal. Stage two is a solid rocket motor burn for about two minutes and 44 seconds. TVC on, is nominal and power is nominal. is nominal. Continuing to hear all good calls now four minutes into today's flight.
stage stage two performance remains nominal, TVC and attitude are nominal. Approximately 100 seconds to burnout. The equal attitude remains nominal. TVC power and attitude remain nominal. Stage two remains nominal, TVC is nominal. Stage two remains nominal. Stage two motor pressure starting to tail off. Vehicle attitude remains nominal. And we have stage two burnout. Stage two burnout confirmed. Cygnus has reached the preliminary orbital insertion. The next major event will be Cygnus's attitude remains nominal. Will be Cygnus's separation from the second stage, which will occur at about the eight minute fifty one second mark. Antares is in orbit and will close for roughly hundred seconds prior to payload separation. Everything still performing as expected, now seven minutes into today's launch. Vehicle, vehicle power and attitude remain nominal. Aries remains nominal. Approximately 30 seconds to payload separation. Latitude remains nominal, power nominal. And we have payload separation. Spacecraft separation confirmed. Cygnus now well on its way to the International Space Station. Stage two attitude is nominal. Can see the excitement in the room there as some celebration, celebratory fist bumps and high fives take place following today's successful launch. And uh, Prop 1 LC, countdown one. I can verify helium pulse purging is in progress. Copy that. And uh, Prop 2, can you verify HPG and 2 supply line post launch purging? 
LC prop two, GN two uh, line pulse purging is in progress. Copy that. And GNC-1, uh, let me know when you've uh, provided the state vector to uh, Cygnus, and uh, we'll look for confirmation from them. Uh, LC-GNC-1 in work. Site control, step 449, can you remove AFBAY GN-2 flow and reconfigure ECS for post-launch? AFBAY GN-2 flow is off, ECS reconfigured for post-flight. We had a successful launch of the Cygnus cargo vehicle, launching at 11.40 a.m. Central Time, 12.40 p.m. Eastern Time today. With it, over 8,000 pounds of food, fuel, and supplies headed to the International Space Station. Arm enable rotated and arm indication no longer illuminated. And Ops 1, disable your local launch enable button. Ops 1, launch enable removed. And GSO, can you disable your local launch enable button? And once Cygnus arrives to the International Space Station in the early hours Monday morning, it will be grappled and installed and then bolted into place. Following that, a series of leak checks at the berthing interface between Cygnus and the Unity module will be conducted to make sure that there's a tight seal between the Cygnus and the station. Following that, the process of hatch opening will begin. Ground lock, external power off. Copy that. And uh, TLM, it looks like we're LOS at this time. A firm, LC. Okay, TLM, uh, you can stop telemetry archiving at the DCOM. You can stop MCC uh, telemetry display uh, server distributor logging, and you can stop the G2 telemetry recording. LC, TLM, and work will report when complete. And if you're just joining us, the Northrop Grumman and Terry's rocket lifted off on time from the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia from Launch Pad 0A at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport at 11.40 a.m. Central Time, 12.40 p.m. Eastern Time. Coming up in a few hours will be Solar Array Deploy. We won't be covering Solar Array Deployment live on air, but we will provide updates via our blog and social media. Again, it was a perfect ride to orbit. Cygnus now well on its way to the International Space Station with 8,300 pounds of food, fuel, and supplies on board. This is Mission Control Houston, Cygnus now safely in orbit, heading to the International Space Station. We had a smooth launch from the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia, and now joining us via phone is International Space Station Operations Manager, Dina Cantella. Dina, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. It's a beautiful launch. How can you hear me? Thanks so much for joining us today, Dina. Now, with a successful launch and Cygnus on orbit, what's ahead of the operation? What's ahead for the operation teams? Well, it was a beautiful launch. How do you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Great. Well, um, so ahead of the operations team, uh, there's, uh, the Cygnus will perform a rendezvous with ISS, and when it gets close enough on Monday, the crew will use the Canadian robotic arm to grapple Cygnus, and then we'll attach it to ISS. And Raja is primed to operate the arm with Kayla 
uh, backing them up. And those joint operations are, are planned to start around 11 p.m. Sunday night in Houston, uh, the joint operations being between ISS and the Northrop team. And then that capture of the Cygnus vehicle is targeted for around 3.35 a.m. Central Time. Um, so after that capture, the ground team will take over control of the arm to birth Cygnus to the Unity Nader port. And that, that's the port that faces Earth. And we can expect the crew to be able to, to get the hatch open that same day on Monday. And that'll be maybe around 11.20 a.m. Houston time, depending on how things are progressing uh, with the onboard operations. And the crew might be able to start some cargo, op cargo operations on Monday, um, but the bulk of the first critical transfers are expected to take place uh, in earnest, really, starting on Tuesday. And then we're expecting to have Cygnus attached to ISS until the end of May. And uh, we're really looking forward to having all this cargo get on board. And Dina, can you tell us a little bit about just how important it is to have these regular cargo flights? Uh, well, as you can imagine, these flights are critical for supplying the science investigations that make the International Space Station the incredible research facility that it is. Uh, and of course, the cargo flights also provide supplies for the crew and critical maintenance items and hardware to make the changes necessary to ISS uh, to support new science. And so just some examples here on uh, this particular flight of research that's coming up. Uh, some examples include investigations looking at the effects of a drug on cancer cells. Um, we've got uh, investigations on skin aging, plant growth. Uh, we're looking at new hydrogen sensors. Um, and and you know, this, this science provides direct benefits to those on Earth as well as uh, for future human spaceflight crews and, and, and future spaceflight. So, you know, this flight also is delivering some important hardware like another modification kit that will continue our work to upgrade the solar arrays onboard ISS um, and some other key items um, that will be needed for uh, a new capability that we're excited about to dispose trash items through the Nanorax airlock to help with some of our logistics. So um, I just say regular cargo missions, will, they're the lifeblood really of ISS's supply chain to continue research and especially as we are continuing to extend station operations through 2030. Thanks, Dina. And is there anything in particular that is unique about this mission that you're most looking forward to? Well, um, yeah, in fact, this uh, Cygnus vehicle has been modified to provide a capability to reboost ISS. And so it just uses some of its propellant um, in the vehicle itself. And we've done, te we've done a, a test prior to this um, with Cygnus, but this will be the, our first real use of the capability to actually reboost the station. Uh, and it gives us another way to do so in addition to the Russian thrusters or the Russian progress cargo spacecraft capabilities. So it's great to be able to expand our capabilities this way. Dina Cantella, the International Space Station Operations Manager, joining us today via phone. Thank you very much, Dina. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Again, we had a successful launch of Northrop Grumman's CRS-17 mission on time today at 11.40 a.m. Central Time, 12.40 p.m. Eastern Time. To recap today's launch activities, the Northrop Grumman and Terry's rocket lifted off on time from the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia from Launch Pad 0A at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport at 11.40 a.m. Central Time, 12.40 p.m. Eastern Time. Coming up in a few hours will be solar array deployment. We won't be covering solar array deployment live on air, but we will provide updates via our blog and social media. It was a very smooth ride to orbit, sending the Cygnus resupply vehicle to its preliminary orbit en route to a two-day rendezvous that will result in Cygnus arriving to the International Space Station in the wee hours Monday morning. We'll be covering the capture of Cygnus and our coverage will begin at 2 a.m. Central Time, 3 a.m. Eastern Time on NASA TV. NASA astronaut Rajachari will use the Canada Arm 2 to reach out and capture Cygnus at 3.35 a.m. Central Time, 4.35 a.m. Eastern Time. 
We'll then take a little pause, come back a couple of hours later for installation coverage, where Cygnus will be turned over to the robotic ground controllers here in Houston to install and bolt Cygnus into place on the Earth-facing port of the Unity module of the International Space Station. Our installation coverage will begin at 5 a.m. Central Time, 6 a.m. Eastern Time on Monday morning. With that, we'll wrap up our coverage of today's liftoff of the Antares rocket from Wallops to send Cygnus into its preliminary orbit. From all of us in Mission Control Houston, have a great weekend and thanks so much for joining us today. We'll see you again on Monday. This is Mission Control Houston.